I want to jump to this clip that we have of you. This is a tweet from Rep. Matt Gates, who said the interim chief investment officer of CalPERS wants more diverse perspective and DEI hires at his company. This is five minutes, but worth every bit of it. And the end is the best. All right. Well, let's hit it. Let's play it so you can hear it. Mr. Bienvenu, how much do you invest each year on behalf of how many of your members? We manage a $500 billion portfolio on behalf of our 2.2 million members and beneficiaries. And you've highlighted your principal responsibility is return for those beneficiaries, right? Correct. Every- now, now, who is this guy and what does he represent? So this guy represents all of California's public workers and he invests all of their money. And what they're doing is they're bullying companies to accept DEI and ESG if they want these investments. And they're, if, they get, if they make the investment, they're actually going in and voting against folks who might be on the board based on the color of their skin. And the let's, public let's, let's workers play the, can't choose to use a different retirement. Oh, maybe, no. Right? Oh, they no, have this to is go it. with this. You're forced to work with this guy. Let's play the clip. The thing that we do every day is about generating returns to pay benefits. And you've worked there 20 years. You were, you've been de- the principal deputy since 2020, right? I was named the deputy chief investment officer in August of 2020. Or I'm sorry, in April of 2020. Okay, great. And, and so I think there's some parallels between what's going on with ESG and DEI. You, you don't deny that CalPERS has a DEI agenda, right? CalPERS is all about generating returns to pay benefits, and every, every topic that we approach is through that lens. Well, does DEI improve the returns to your investors? I think part of good governance of a company is having diverse perspectives brought to bear as they manage that company. And I feel strongly about that for the investment team that I lead. Also, we want diverse Terrific. perspectives. And, and, and what is the evidence that, that, that you rely on for the belief that the DEI agenda will produce better returns? Is there any study, report, analysis? You know, as an investor, I read research reports constantly. I probably read five, six, eight of them a day. So uh, over the course of my career, that's probably been thousands. I know. I'm I'm just wondering, is there one that kind of sticks in out your mind? You say, Congressman, I'm here to do good by these 2.2 million beneficiaries and my embrace of DEI. This is what I can point to as the evidence that, that that's helping them. Every database study can tell lots of different things and every data works that way. That's the way investing works. And remember that when we're focused on investing, we're focused on how we... Mr. Bambi, you, can, you can either cite a study or you can't. <laughs> you can't, right? In okay. the thousands of studies that I... But just name one. Okay, through, well, here's I what. I found a study that actually CalPERS did. You guys did this study. It's entitled Emerging Diverse Manager Data Report. And, and, and I'm citing from the uh, sixth page of report where it says, <laughs> since inception... <laughs> Current diverse managers generally underperformed <laughs> non-diverse managers in the asset class in the policy study. benchmark. But he reads lots of stuff. Are you familiar with this report? Can I see a copy of that study, please? Well, I, I, wow. Mr. 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 Chairman, I seek unanimous consent to enter into the record the emerging diverse manager report uh, published by CalPERS. Without objection. I, I'm not able to show it to you now, but y- you don't have any basis to disagree with the agency you've been a part of leading saying that the diverse, the DEI hires aren't doing as well as the non-DEI hires. As I say, when we think about diversity, we think about diverse perspectives being brought to bear on investment decisions. Right, but okay, so those are two different things, Mr. Bienvenu, because on one hand, there's provide returns for my investors. And what your own data says is that your DEI hires underperform there. And then on the other hand, you say, well, all these diverse perspectives are really important. But I worry about the market manipulation and the bullying because... As I review what CalPERS has put out under its own investment guidelines, you you brag about the fact that you voted against 768 directors at the companies you invest in most recently, and then in the prior year, you'd only voted against 133 directors. So is CalPERS voting against people as directors for companies based on their skin color? We take up every vote independently based on the merits of the vote itself. Right, but do you ever consider, like, someone's skin color? Because it's pretty immutable. People don't choose to be white or black or Asian. They just are. Uh, We choose based on what will make the best oversight. You're under oath here, Mr. Bienvenu. Can you deny under oath that CalPERS is voting against directors based on the color of their skin? I can tell you we make every vote based on what will make that the best board for oversight of that company. Right, but, but the best board is actually not doing so well. So, Mr. Chairman, 
Let's look at the scorecard. In the state of Florida, where we aren't pushing ESG and DEI, the Florida retirement system is netting a 7.5% uh, notch for the fiscal year. May I enter that under the record? No objection. And CalPERS reports only 5.8% for 2022 to 2023. Hmm. Can I enter that under the record as well? Without objection. So, so you're not performing as well. Your own data says that your DEI hires aren't performing as well. And you were there for 20 years, and you applied twice for the chief investment position, and you were passed over for that position twice, and you said you weren't going to apply for it the third time because you'd been passed over twice. And I guess they've hired an immigrant to do that job instead. Do you think that maybe... <laughs> You were passed over for some of these DEI reasons? <laughs> Albert's hiring decisions is, is their own hiring decisions, and I'm not really a part of that, candidate. Cl clearly you aren't. <laughs> <laughs> I yield back. Wow. You know, uh, so my question to you, Matt, is did you witness the spine be ripped from that man's back, or did he show up without yeah, one? He was, he was not just a DEI purveyor. He was also a victim. And <laughs> – like there are moments you want to feel bad for these people, but actually the institutionalized racism that is DEI yeah. only happens because there are people like that, because there are people that are willing to do. It. Imagine being one of the people that was like up for one of these board positions and it was just you weren't you weren't you were too white. You didn't get hired. And then what message does that send all the way down an organization like that and throughout the economy? And at some point, isn't that why we have antitrust laws? If there is collusion to literally like de whiteify the entire corporate system in our country, like, doesn't that seem worse than what Standard Oil was doing?